Hi, and thanks for tuning in to another Tommy Moto Mission Briefing on helmets. Now, a little while ago, I got off the telephone with a customer who was asking some very intelligent questions about helmets and how they're made. And there were some questions that he was asking that I thought would be better illustrated if I were to show you guys in a video. So what I did was to take an old HJC CLX6 helmet of mine that was sort of involuntarily retired and to take the Atomic Moto trusty bandsaw and cut it up into pieces to make a better prop here. So that's what I've done. Are you ready to dive in? Okay, the first thing is that helmets are comprised, in our definition, of four different types of components. The first is some sort of outer shell material like this. Now this one is fiberglass, but it can be made of carbon fiber or blends of carbon, Kevlar, Dyneema. It can be polycarbonate, which is a form of plastic, but basically some hard outer shell. And this comprises the first stage of a multi-layer impact system. This is important. That's what a helmet is. It's a multi-layer impact management system. Now the second component of that is an EPS liner. EPS means expanded polystyrene, or if you've heard this term before, you know what that means is styrofoam. Styrofoam is a foam padding material, not foam, but it's a padding material that crushes, it compresses absorbing energy and does not rebound. That is the most important component of a helmet. And then the third one is some sort of comfort liner. This is to help with the fitment of helmets and also to improve the comfort, the, the moisture and heat management, etc. Now there's a fourth component, which is what we define as the trim pieces, and that can be things like a visor or a shield or, or vents, etc. But the main structural components are these three. Okay, let's first talk briefly about the shell. Now this HJC here is a nice shell. It's a fiberglass material, and this helmet is certified to a little bit higher level. In the U.S., it's Snell M2010. M2010, M is for motorcycle. Now the liner here, excuse me, the shell here you see is fairly thick. There's a good amount of thickness. We'll get some detail shots here, but it is not a uniform thickness. There are ridges along the helmet, and in fact, when you get to some other components of the helmet, like the chin bar, it actually varies in thickness. It tapers down a little bit, so it has a little bit more give. All of this uh, exterior shell is designed to sort of deflect, compress, and absorb energy, also spreading the energy over a wider load. The second component of a helmet is the EPS liner. And I'm going to pull this around here and show you this cutaway that we did here just a little while ago. I want to show you a few things. First of all, the EPS varies a little bit in thickness around the helmet. It's nice and thick around the helmet here, around the crown of your helmet. But then some of the other pieces, like in the chin bar, there's still EPS in this HJC helmet. This is a great design, but great helmet, by the way. It is a little bit thinner, but this is still important to have for, uh, for times when you have a frontal impact and you need some impact absorbing material. And so this is something you look for. You see that the EPS line extends pretty far down along the front of the helmet. And then there are sort of some side pockets here. You can see this piece is kind of removable here. Okay, and that's a little bit thinner design. We'll drop a detailed shot of that in there also. I'll pull that out and set it aside. There's a strap pass through. One really cool thing about the EPS liner, you've probably heard the term dual density liner in the past. You may or may not know what that is. I want you to look here and see that there are actually, there's an insert, there's an extra piece of uh, material here in the inside of the helmet, a separate component. And this is a different density of a polystyrene than this one. This is actually a little bit harder and this one is a little bit softer. Now, helmet manufacturers will place that in varying points inside the helmet. Sometimes they do it more extensively, which is better, but sometimes they do it more localized, which is really designed to get around the test. The unfortunate thing is that helmet manufacturers only really tell us whether they pass or fail the test, and they don't really publish a lot of information about how much they may exceed uh, tests by. So we don't have a lot of information to go on to say one helmet is, is better than another. But we do have a little bit, and so we're going to show you some of that. So that's the expanded polystyrene liner here. So uh, another thing that's kind of cool to show you about this helmet, uh, this is a true story, by the way. There's a, a small uh, depression, a very small depression you can see right here in the helmet. Uh, in the EPS liner, just a little tiny one. Now you can't see anything on the external shell, right? It looks totally fine, but um, 
There was a little nick on it, but we cut right through it, and you can see there's a very small depression. That's where the helmet took an impact and actually crushed the, crushed the liner a little bit. And that's why when your helmet takes a good shot, takes a shot, period, you're supposed to throw it away and get a new one. You can see why that EPS liner there has been comp. The third part of helmets is, uh, is the comfort liner, which is a, a series of foam pads that are either molded or um, sewn or laser cut and, and bonded to fabric and stuck inside the helmet. This is for moisture management, for comfort, and most importantly, for sizing. Um, here's an important detail about sizing. You know, when helmet manufacturers make their helmets, they will build, um, say, two, three, sometimes more, but usually two, three, four external shells to comprise a size range. And then they will vary either the sizing of the EPS liner inside or uh, they'll use the comfort liner to vary the size. So, for example, in this HJC, the, um, the extra small, small, and medium uh, use the small shell, and then they vary the thickness of the EPS liner inside of those three models to change the fit. The large, extra large, and 2XL use a large shell mold, large EPS also, and then they use different thicknesses here. So, theoretically, it's possible to change these components inside the helmet, the, the um, comfort liner and the cheek pads, which unfortunately I lost, but the cheek pads uh, to vary the thickness of the helmet. That's how they're produced. Back to this though. And this is a really important component because it helps the comfort of a helmet and, and helps uh, the precision of its fit. You know, if you have a good quality foam here, uh, the helmet will stay nice and firm on your head. And if you have something that's a little bit less expensive, it may pack out a little bit and get loose. The other thing is you want to make sure that this liner uh, is as snug as possible uh, when the helmet is new because as it compresses, this will help improve the stability over the long term. Now, there's a fourth area of the helmet, and that's what we call the trim pieces. That's things like um, the visor or the shield on this particular helmet. Uh, it's different things that aren't really part of the active safety system of a helmet, but are still part of the construction, vent, uh, external vents, etc. They're really sort of ancillary to discussion. They don't, um, they don't hit the real basic function of a helmet. But to summarize this, what a helmet is made of is an external shell. It's a multi-layer impact system. It's a hard external shell, an EPS liner to absorb impact, and then a comfort liner to help with fit and, uh, and actual riding management, hopefully giving you a better ride. In any case, that is our quick breakdown of uh, helmet construction, deconstruction as I like to say earlier. Uh, we are Atomic Moto, www.atomic-moto.com, home of the bombers. Thanks for tuning in to another mission briefing. BP out.